uh, create compensation matrix, classic compensation matrix, wherein I briefed you, like, for example, if we have the rating scale, right, compa ratio, and depending upon that, if uh, we want to decide, right, within this, we had three different options. One is related to amount, percent, and weighted. Yesterday, I showed you for the amount one, let me quickly brief you about the percentage basis one. Okay. We can select whatever options uh, we want to have. Only difference between the amount and percent goes to is mm -hmm. here. You can see here they we, whatever we are going to define, right? It's going to be let me show you like that difference. Okay. In the amount one, you can see clearly it is asking for us the default different uh, default currency. Whereas when we opted for percent one, it's not asking for us the default currency. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to select the same rating scale, compa ratio. Okay, that's it. Mm -hmm. So here you can see, this is asking about the minimum and maximum amount, right? Yes. Whereas if we talk about here, it, this is going to... The percentage? Yes. Okay. 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 Now similarly, if we get into weighted one, mm -hmm. right? Yesterday I briefed you like, uh, when we talk about for the weighted one, mm -hmm. Right, how to calculate the min and max depending upon the factor that we have. All right. Yes. After that, the another query that you had that will come into picture into total value composition matrix. Mm -hmm. Total value and like it also includes the bonus and variables, everything. Right? I, will, I will come to that. Yeah, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you see here, right? Mm -hmm. So talking about this weighted one, right? It is up to us, like how we want to use it. If you will look into this weighted one, right? And this percentage, there is no major difference. Until or unless we define the factors, right? Like here, normally I have selected only, uh, weighted I have selected and I have selected only compa ratio. If in case I'm going to select any other factors, right? So here, also the the amount of uh, or the numbers that we are going to put in for minimum max so it's going to be in the percentage basis only like in the yesterday in the uh i've briefed you right like let's take an example in terms of the merit merit yeah, right? yeah the maximum is uh, here i'm not considering the rating right mm -hmm. that is the reason why it is not considered not coming up whereas if we consider the rating as well here like zero to you to start so depending upon this review rating that we have, right? Let's okay. take an example for 
this let's take an example for this review rating uh i'm deciding something like uh two or three or whatsoever right so this will be calculated based on the the max uh, minimum and maximum it will be calculated based on that okay so oh. within the defined range that we are putting it over here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so that's the major overall difference between this three okay now coming back to you had one question right like let's take an example you have some group of workers who fall under 100% compa ratio, right? Mm -hmm. For them, you do not want to uh, give the increments, right? Or salary yeah. for them, it's going to be one-time bonus. So for that, mainly we create the total value composition matrix. Where we can have a lump sum also. Yes. Right? Because mostly, if it is all at least by 110 compa ratio, that's not a problem. Because mm -hmm. we are pushing them towards a promotion. Mm -hmm. But if it is like there is no role because it is it is illogical to have a promotion every year for an employee. Yes, right. Right. So I feel like we, uh, so most of the companies, they give something called lump sum. Mm -hmm. So that is something we wanted to add where what we do, what you rightly picked it up is like, yes, if the system is going 120 above or certain 100 and uh, say like a threshold of 110 above, 110 mm -hmm. percentage and above, the system mm -hmm. should auto trigger for the manager for a lump sum. Okay. The person mm -hmm. who is rating, right? The manager for that employee, that mm -hmm. manager should get a trigger pop up saying like, hey, you're not allowed. So mm -hmm. I wanted to design how you design that. In work day. Sorry, what did you say? Can you please repeat again? For example, uh, if you are a rating manager, I'm your HR, okay? Mm -hmm. You want to rate your employee who is mm -hmm. reporting to you and you know that that person is already getting paid above the compa ratio. He's 110 mm -hmm. now, okay? Mm -hmm. So his current compa ratio is 100, okay? When, uh, let's say his current compa ratio is 100 percentage, which is positioned to the market, okay? Mm -hmm. And you're giving him a highest salary because uh, he's exceptional performer, mm -hmm. okay? And you ought to give him the performance raise, which mm -hmm. takes to a new compa ratio during the pay rise, mm -hmm. which is uh, triggering to a 120. Mm -hmm. So in the system, you have a threshold of up to 110 of an employee. If it is going 120 of the new compa ratio, the system should auto trigger you saying like, Raj, you cannot give him a, a pay raise. Instead, I recommend you to readjust the employee's rating. Okay. Like more like a force fitting and we can give him a lump sum. Mm -hmm. And that lump sum is this much for this particular job profile. So to create that, how you do that? So see, so talking about here, we have to create different, different type of calculations. Okay. okay. Like the criteria that you mentioned, right? Like uh, depending upon the lump sum, let me see. Yes. It will be super if there is something like lump sum. So I wanted to understand it theoretically. Lump sum. Yeah. They have appearance lump sum basis. Severance on lump sum. Yeah. Let me open one of them and let me brief. Severance can be the end, right? When I employ exits yeah. on a forcible thing. Let's take lump sum is taxable. Can we pick one? The one on the top? Can you check? Returns numeric value to presenting earning that are lump sum taxable for T4A reporting. This is for company. They have not highlighted anything. Okay. Uh, useful labor costing override in that 100% of the severance. It's the HR service cost center, not the employees default cost center. So see, talking about, let me brief you, like normally the one that we create here, right? So here you can see we can define the criteria first of all. Okay. 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 Uh, like for talking about the first thing that this will get automatically triggered is for workers who do not have the ratings. 
okay after that further it's going to dig into and it is going to check the eligibility criteria okay like for what is going to be the eligible workers okay apart from that we can create different different calculations right like you mentioned like if someone is above the compa ratio or whatever criteria you want mm -hmm. okay depending upon that or whatever uh, uh we can set up right like what is the lump sum that we want to set up depending upon the budget that will be segregated that will be coming let's take an example this lump sum is something you want to give it uh, through merit process or maybe mm -hmm. from uh, whatever scenario you want to give them maybe always it's not uh, normally what happens it, yeah it can be bonus or it can be through a, a stock options so it's completely up to us but talking mm -hmm. about this compensation matrix that I was briefing about, this is this mainly comes into picture. Let me see if in case there is other calculation that is already built up. Mm -hmm. So if you see this employee seniority calculation so like normally uh, there are so many bonus plan right wherein uh, the uh, competition comes into picture depending upon their seniority level in the company as well right but that is a rule down thing that is like yeah. a, a... The constant value that why you use this constant, constant value calculation is like let's take an example there is a fixed amount that goes to all those specific group of people right so oh okay group. okay for example in uh, for example if it's like a mobile elements yes. 1500 means it's 1500 for everybody and yes. for the reimbursement allowances we can do this like constant value. okay Okay, I'm just searching for Normally, this is the practice one. This one doesn't have, and it will not be possible for me to create uh, anything in this one because I was trying that yesterday to at least create uh, that scenario. But mainly, the issue was okay. Uh, like in this tenant, there are we do not have the, some real time data. All right, this is only for practice purpose, and people are randomly practicing it. Okay. okay? Okay, so that is so, the reason, but I will do one thing. I will still uh, try to just tell me one scenario which you want me to create. Uh, create. So, as we the lump sum creation, if we can try that, it will be fantabulous. Wait a second, let me just note it down. Yeah, I will try that. And if Please possible, take time. there is no rush, even we can uh, tweak in, in, uh, in our forthcoming classes. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. One second, just let me note down. Yeah, like, you create one lump sum and I can show you like how normally it's work. Yeah. And also there are like certain things in European Raj where uh, we have something called structural increase. I don't know whether India is having such payroll processes where we give a structural increase. I remember while I was working with uh, in one of the big firms in India, mm -hmm. I have implemented structural increase back then. It cannot be humongous. Okay. Stru I will give you the exact uh, scenario of a structural increase. Under the compa ratio, there are like some somebody who we call it as outliers, right? Who are typically a green circle employee below the compa ratio circle. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember I gave you a scenario. Like if a person yeah. is in a, uh, below the compa ratio, as a compensation manager, I discuss with the HRBP and their business uh, lead. And I have a discussion saying like, if this person is particularly under the comparison, what is your plan? Are you increasing it? Because it's giving a pay disparity. And we also give them a remuneration aspect for them to choose if the person is really uh, 
good to go for an increase or not, the manager will decide based on the employee's performance and also the em employee's seniority, tenure and everything. If the person is closer to the retirement, we tend to give him a lump sum. Okay. When no, the person is really good. Performance is also good. Then we will try to give him a structural increase. Mm -hmm. Structural increase to just scope up not exactly to the 100 if we if we have a budget we'll try to close it and position it to a market of 100 or we will take if we set a 70 with the comp ratio which is terribly low we try yeah. to pitch in uh, like a structural increase is not like a very big increase but it will be like just like a high touch just like on top of your three percent of merit increase you also get one more percentage of structural increase based on your performance and no, if you're now we're talking about this scenario I have come across like mainly uh, in a company there are many workers that we have people are of same level but uh, the difference between uh, the employees compensation is not that huge but there is a difference right so exactly. for mitigating that so normally we call that as a market correction like within any company like you mentioned about big four companies right so uh, like previously I've observed, like they internally do that. And it is not mandatory that it will be a part of a uh, merit cycle. Sometimes it will be the part of that, or sometimes they will do uh, separately uh, in between. Actually, uh, you're cycle. Percent right. It is not, yeah. it should not be part, the market correction. Yes, the current word you picked up is right. But because I'm so used to call it as a structural increase since mm. we do it like every year on year. And the thing is like, uh, we do the correction. It As you rightly said, it need not be part of the merit. But we ensure that we make it a part of the merit because we want to use the budget wiser. Mm -hmm. okay. For example, you're having 10 euros as a budget to distribute mm -hmm. among your team. And I wanted to, and I have a budget constraint. And equally, I wanted to potentially give a structural increase for my high performer and keep them with the trade, right? I give the same 10. Instead of 10, I'll give you 11 and mm -hmm. ask you to make it like, sound it like you're giving something at the same time, not giving, you know, mm -hmm. that's the dirty politics we have in the organizations of big four. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I will give you an example of Deloitte, right? They uh, pretty much like, let's take an example. They hired someone uh, initially and uh, the uh, that specific employee's composition was low, right? Depending upon the comp, comp ratio that they have. So they do not do at the initial stage, but once the worker works there for around uh, six months or one year, once they complete, they do the market correction that's what normally they call it in uh, Deloitte that's how I, I was uh, I'm aware about it okay and they do it and it's yeah. not just Deloitte okay because I know like Deloitte is one of my merit partners I work with but mm -hmm. uh, I also also all the big four companies like uh, in even in Cognizant they do the same mm -hmm. okay they, they will give you if you're an entree employee they hire you much lesser than the uh, market ratio Correct. and after six months of your on trial level as you're excelling they will push you within the six months they will give you a rise and sure. we call it soft cycle corrections mm -hmm. and not majority of the employees will get to know about their corrections sure. and correction is also not humongous like how you get as a merit or a promotion cycle it will be just like one or two percentage of increase mm -hmm. and still sound like an increase it's just like an yeah. IO share. and what they normally do is slowly and gradually they try like not in a one span of time, like slowly and gradually, if in case uh, someone is very low with respect to the comp ratio, then it, like you mentioned, like the increment will not be that much huge, but it happens quite number of times just to get at the uh, right stage of the comp ratio. Exactly. And especially in manufacturing in companies like Caterpillar, they will give you like this, especially for shop floor, shop floor workers. Okay, they mm -hmm. have a blue color and white color and they do the similar aspects of structural increase there. Mm -hmm. So these are the realistic scenario where European companies, they do it majority, majoritively. And uh, I feel like Indian markets are pretty generous in what we give compared to what I see here. Yeah. It, it is pretty dirty. And I am asked to do the dirty uh, corrections just to save the money for the company. Okay. So that time I need to be very flexible for my uh, management board while I bring them like, hey, this is what the calculation looks like. And you just seek the approval. So I wanted to give that realistic scenario for them. Hmm. Uh, so uh, mainly uh, talking about uh, the advanced composition, uh, like uh, the setup that will happen in your company, right? So mainly you will be having some third party company, uh, some work department company or some 
from where you will be getting the support, right? They will be majorly doing that, right? Because you alone cannot do it. Or and will... the workday support team will be helping us on certain things. So I'm not they will be helping, but talking about like uh, entire designing, like how things will happen and everything. So he's going to do that. It is us. It is going to be completely us. We have to do all the math because we have to go get to know about the company. It's not easy peasy like how you do it in, in Indian markets. Okay. So you will have a good team uh, with respect to the compensation, like who will be yes. uh, doing designing and everything and all? Absolutely. I myself in a director level and uh, I have my VP partners with me and I have my subordinates who will be reporting under me and we all so do it. Your, your major role will be uh, more towards the designing part rather than uh, talking about the configurational aspect, correct? Is it? Absolutely. Or that's the thing. I will be designing certain allowances plan and compensation plan and I have to produce policies and procedures. That's how, that's why I'm getting paid, dude. So mm -hmm. that's part of the job. So yes, this, this is what I wanted. So that's why I keep pulling you back saying like, Raj, I need something to design because mm -hmm. that is more implemented. I will not be doing this admin. Yeah, so that, that, is, that is the reason. See, I'm that's trying to get, give you more insights uh, rather than getting more into the configurational aspect, because I understood like you will not be doing this configuration part, whereas you have better, you should have a better understanding, like what whatever you want to do, how things will happen in the system, right? Absolutely. Because Absolutely. once you design everything, after that configuration part will is, is something that uh, the uh, whoever will be uh, the worked at team members uh, from, from the advanced composition model they will be doing majorly. Absolutely, because my team, I have a reportee of five, okay? Mm -hmm. And my reportees will generally take care of the administration part. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to be front-ending my team, saying like, mm -hmm. guys, we are not going to do this way. Let's implement on structural increase. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give the such plan, like, okay, we have done the benefits plan like this. Uh, if Say like, if my company is doing terribly, uh, it's literally sulking back in tar target achievement and we need to cut down few benefits. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to do run a benefit utilization report. Mm -hmm. And I say like where I can do the cost cutting for the company and mm -hmm. still look lucrative by giving non-monetary benefits. And how I do it, I have to design. And that designing part, I have to implement in the HCM because I see that as more like a mind mapping tool interconnects with all the payroll and other structures for the employees. So that's why I asked like how we do the job, job catalog because Workday, uh, um, workday is a tool I never been with, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, the European market big companies they are getting into the workday tool. I've been sulking around with all the SAP success factors, so I pretty much know like what is what in SAP success fa factors, and I can build it because the years of development I have done in that. But with workday, it is like getting terrible and terrible day by day, because I felt it's like. Maybe it's because I just made my projection like it's not user friendly from mm -hmm. the day one. So that's why I have the, uh, what is it, X, you know, like how I'm going to do. So as I have a training with you, right, you mm -hmm. teach me like you have taught me uh, certain aspects. You actually broke up my fear, actually. Thank you for mm -hmm. that. And you told me the simplest aspects of how to do. So mm -hmm. uh, that's why I wanted to ask ideologies from you and help me consulting on in a better way so I can implement that at my work. Yeah, correct. See, uh, talking about if I'm not sure how you had the first impression with respect to Workday and that way, but I have worked initially in the SAP, right? I didn't get a chance to work in uh, success factors, but I have worked in SAP. But okay. when I moved from SAP to Workday, it's in, it was completely different in, in whether you talk about the UI or the uh, the way things are designed uh, in uh, in workday it's way easier and simpler when compared to SAP. I have no, uh, I have I have, didn't get a much chance to get into success factor, but I know uh, success factor and workday is pretty much same. But still, if you talk about uh, the UI and the other aspects, I have heard from others. I will not say from my side because I didn't get a chance to work towards the success factor, but I've heard like uh, Vogue is much better. Whether we talk about from the security point of view, I have heard from most of the client, like uh, the security aspect of Vogue is much better when compared to other ERPs. Okay. Yeah. Okay.
because we are in the part of the initial inter in integration part right uh, we are mm -hmm. still as a company and europe europe wants a very simple straightforward methodologies okay and mm -hmm. if like multiple steps they are going to mess it up big time and mm -hmm. uh, uh, my and especially with uh, people especially in germany germans mm -hmm. want it like abc just like your ikea manual okay mm -hmm. You have you seen your IKEA ma manual? If you gone into IKEA in Hyderabad or yeah, 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 the their manual is very picturistic and simple. Correct. It's just they wanted, and these people are pretty used to go with the observatory mode and take mm -hmm. into emotional decision making. So, yeah. workday is full of logic, and their emotional decision making gets contradicted. So that is where the mess happens. So most of yeah. the Europeans they feel like workday is pretty pretty tasky and more brainy for their brain. That's what they feel, actually. Correct. See, me, the issue is, like, uh, what I have observed is in my experience, normally the clients, right? Normally, they what they expect is uh, they, like, if they want to get everything done, but they do not want to follow the best practice that is there from the workday side, right? Yeah. There are some, like, I have come across multiple, like, clients, like, who have had major issues with respect to security aspects. Right, just because they didn't follow the best practice. Similarly, for different different modules, there are some best practices. When we'll talk about the client, right? They want to automate everything. Okay, yes. that is something which we can understand, but there is a limitation that we have at multiple stages where things are not possible that the way they want. But this many a scenarios, what happens is they become adamant. No, we want it in this way. So we pull up some workarounds, right, and try to get things done as per their way. But when the company expands or whenever there is a major changes that comes upon uh, in picture at the later stage, that thing, the work around thing that doesn't work. Absolutely. Because here, uh, having known the European minds right here, where I speak with my management boards, they always have a global expansion always running in their mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. And especially if it's a public listed company, the trouble is too much. For yeah. example, my public listed company, uh, all these years, I have worked in few private sectors where yeah. in private sectors, the pre-IPO sessions, they were not in IPO, they are a public list, a private listed company. So there the shares handling, the stock handling is pretty easier. Okay. But mm -hmm. once if it's a public listed company for stock plans, you are your you will be getting a cash entitled every quarter as your RSUPs and VSOPs getting exercised. Okay. Okay. In such case, it will be a troublesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. I need to have a tracking. And I always ensure like not to integrate share works with Workday for security reasons. I don't mm -hmm. want that to be appearing for random employee in my people, in my people team itself. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's not, uh, not necessary for uh, office management team to know about some employees thing because for people team everybody even office management even a hrbp or a recruiter would be knowing who is getting what because they all we all have the access of workday people management team okay, okay. so i don't want my people management team other than the comp uh, total rewards team i don't want anybody to know about mm -hmm. others stocks that is a gdpr issue okay mm -hmm. and that's the reason i never wanted i always sat on the uh, topic like never to integrate both not to have an API, but my leads wants that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just because like, as you rightly said, they wanted everything to be automated. They don't want to waste their time to, to them. It is more manual. I feel like that's more security. That yeah. all I have come across scenarios like wherein uh, the issues that comes up because of the automation, it's around a few times in a year, but still they want to automate it. Yeah, especially they want to, if they are having a global expansion, yes, they do. Yeah. Because and in Workday, we have multiple options, right? Like, let's take an example. If I'm not automating anything, if in case any new employee comes into picture, he or she might not be aware about like how things turn. For all those things, Workday has given us option, right? We can add on some help text wherein we can clearly mention the steps, like what exactly they have to do, how they have to follow things. So all those things are available in most of the scenarios, but still... Because now they wanted my job catalog, what we are working on workday, everything mm -hmm. to be automated. That's why I brought in yesterday, like, hey, uh, we have two new job positions that mm -hmm. are coming up. 
and say like we are creating we are uh, we are expected to create some literally like 20 job positions which is totally new for my organization itself mm -hmm. nobody has worked in the previous and we have to write from the scratch we need to design their job descriptions we just got it from their managers who themselves are not clear about what whom they are going to hire okay, okay. so such position and i'm expected to do an automation for such positions so that's why i asked like how you do the job catalog in workday and mm -hmm. you like this what you uh, like our initial initiation call you have to do it through the compensation range you need to do that yeah okay so talking about this calculation that i was briefing right uh, there is one interesting thing about uh, this calculation that we have so if in case let's take an example i have already initiated uh, the uh, compensation review process right but still i have an option to edit this mm -hmm. okay uh, i can edit this and there will not be any impact in the ongoing event that is already there in place so whatever changes i will do here it will automatically reflect there for example, say like the person's, um, it's an amount type, right? And the calculation is 15%. The 15% will be on top of the base, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And uh, the system will say like, for example, an employee is getting 100,000 euros and mm -hmm. it will be 15% of their 100,000 euros can be their merit. Right. Okay. okay. Right. Let's take an example. It's an ongoing event and I want to change it to 10%. Okay, or I got some additional budget, I want to make it 20%, right? If in case I update it to 20%, automatically in the uh, the in progress event. This is right? irrespective of the rating. Yes. Okay, uh, so it is logically like similar, like a lump sum if you're- Yes, okay, right. Um, again, it's the, the conditions of compa ratio, but- Yeah. Okay. This is like, oh yeah, we can give something like, you know, like uh, some- uh, some employees, if they are having done extra, okay, mm -hmm. irrespective of the uh, thing, like a retention bonus, mm -hmm. percentage as a default retention bonus, mm -hmm. or like joining bonus for a few employees, we can do the, that. Yeah. That's Talking about this compensation matrix, this is not only limited to merit process, okay, merit uh, cycle. Uh, it can be linked to stock, it can be linked to bonus. All these three advanced compensation plans that we have. Yes, and also part of it can be also it also can be linked to your allowances, right? No, normal allowances you are referring about it cannot. Yeah. Okay. 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 Now let us go back and let's look into the compensation uh, bonus plans. Mm -hmm. Next week, when we touch upon the stock plan, right? Mm -hmm. I want to have like two scenarios for me. One for a public listed company where employees can view their stock prices, which keeps fluctuating based on a public listed company. Okay. Post IPO companies. And one mm -hmm. plan for a pre IPO company. I want both. Okay. So, if at all you wanted, we can have the session even on Tuesday. So, I can just share you the plan for you like an outline so i can just share it with you and uh, if you can give me one minute i can just explain at the end of the call okay mm -hmm. okay uh, so talking about bonus plan it is of two types available uh, normally amount based and percentage based okay okay here again the compensation element i hope you remember this is mainly used for the linkage between the payroll and the compensation part okay so we can create the compensation element like whatever bonus plan we are creating and we can add on over there okay okay uh, we have already looked into apply ft percentage okay this reflects only for amount based okay okay now talking about this options some of the options we have already looked into like talking about allow target override if in case whatever target amount i'm putting right let's take an example if i'm putting as zero okay 
uh, i want to override that right because i do not want to set up any uh, specific amount over there i want to decide based on the other factors so it's completely up to us okay okay a uh, high target from a uh, security group like if in case i want to hide i have mentioned uh, the target and i want to hide it from any sec specific security group uh, we have that option we can update that mm -hmm. again reference currency reference frequency this is something uh, we can look into after that we have company funding scorecard okay so this is something which mainly uh, determines the funding of the target bonus pool that we have okay uh, let's take an example uh, we are uh, in the competition review process okay uh, wherein we look into like what is the company performance right and therein uh, what is the specific uh, bonus pool that we have okay. right so we can add the scorecard to that uh, specific uh, bonus plan and depending upon the uh, like who will be qualifying or uh, depending upon that uh, they will be getting it okay let's look into some of the scorecards that is available yeah and i also would like to understand uh there are like few scorecards in our company we have a balance scorecard like how we are going to show okay mm -hmm. Uh, the weightages of the scorecard which is summing up to 100 percentage right mm -hmm. uh, we did an experimental of a scorecard uh, based scenario for target achievement okay where uh, we got every year we come up with five goals or seven goals okay mm -hmm. and we say like as a mid-sized company this was something when i have worked in a startup form okay which is mm -hmm. like it's more like startup to a scaling up range of organization of a thousand employee and mm -hmm. uh, their expectation is they had a company scorecard and each of the goals with the weightages right 25 percentage say like uh five into 25 mm -hmm. okay so uh four into uh that is let's have 20 percentage each okay and mm -hmm. it has been split into uh totally of five okay so mm -hmm. uh they are asked to get 20 percentage of their target achievement for particular one particular business unit for example bringing up new products okay it is mm -hmm. that is particularly a one of the goal okay mm -hmm. and who brings the product we have a products team which is one of our business unit okay or one of our job function their mm -hmm. major thing is to achieve the 20 percentage which contributes the overall 100 percentage of the organization for mm -hmm. for a people team for us it is always the enps score so we need to ensure that the employee net promoter score is to be achieved at a 20 percentage okay mm -hmm. so we strive only towards that goal so we are all going to collectively at the end we are going to contribute for the overall 100 percentage of the target achievement by individual by each of the job functions ensuring that we achieve the 20 percentage to a, towards a collective goal okay in such case how you do so normally you mentioned like uh, if in case we have different different goals that is set up right like a uh, weightage of the goals correct yes we have a weightage of 20 20 20 say like mm -hmm. we have five job functions mm -hmm. Each of the jo job functions are relevantly given 20 percentage of weightage as their mm -hmm. overall target goal mm -hmm. so this is their part of the goal although their individual performance goal is 100 percentage which they are mm -hmm. going to work but their overall target achievement contribution for the company's balance scorecard is 20 percentage out of the 100 mm -hmm. okay Likewise, similar other four teams along with the fifth team will be achieving each of the 2020 to get a, a target of 100. Okay. Mm -hmm. For example, at the end of the result, right? Uh, say like e for NP ENPS score, the people team really sucked. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to underachieve one day at 10 percentage. Okay. Mm -hmm. So during the time of the budget allocation for merits, Mm -hmm. We will be given contribution, the budget only at a 10 percentage, whatever the achievement is, that is what will be given to that particular department mm -hmm. to just part around for their thing. You know, we do this top down approach, mm -hmm. uh, more like an agile, agile budgeting planning, mm -hmm. where we give it for each of the, for example, for CHRO, we give that budget based on their achievement. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the individual people 
right? The management team like CFO, CHRO, C CCO, for example, for commercials and sales, we have CCO and we have mm -hmm. CPO for chief of product and chief of technology. Each of their management boards, they will be given based on their percentage of targets achieved out of the mm -hmm. 100. That will be not equally distributed. That will be commemorated and calculated with their 20 percentage of their achievement. Okay, if they are achieving 20 percentage, they will get the entire amount of what it's worth of a 20 percentage full target. Okay, but it is like they are achieving under like 10 percentage, they will be given only the 10 percentage of worth of the budget, and they are ought to give irrespective of the headcount they have, they have to pull down. Okay, or and that is when we also retain and we have a layoff by pulling out few people and we utilize that particular layoff amount to utilize for the internal merit plan that gets deeper and deeper but in such cases how you do how you distribute that so normally Can talking about uh, you mentioned about different different group of people right yeah. so normally yeah. that in that scenario first of all what we do is because different group, uh, group of people will have different uh goals right within that so normally yeah. for different group of people here in the bottom you can see there is an eligibility rule so we do like functional wise let's keep it simple like job function we can uh, i have to just put it as an eligibility rule of job function yes it's completely up to us like in whichever way if you want to put it up as a management level as well rather than going into the uh, job profile level because in major scenario what happens is it goes based on because in one company there will be thousands of job profiles but if i talk about management level there are going to be minimum uh, less number of management level so it's completely up to us like in which way we want to proceed forward but majorly talking about the bonus plan it goes towards the management level but it differs from company to company in some companies i have seen it goes on uh, the uh, job profile level as well and a combination of both as well it's completely up to us. So we can define like whoever will be eligible for this specific bonus plan. Okay. okay. And for that respective people, you can see the scorecard here. Let me open this. Right. You can set up. Like okay. what is the weightage? Like you mentioned, like uh, there are five different, different goals and they have different, different weightage. Okay. All right. So depending upon that weightage, the bonus amount will be calculated. Okay, let's take an example. If someone achieved 100%, they will get uh, the 100% of the bonus uh, target that is there. Okay, for example, uh, as I, I'm just coming back to my example itself. So mm. my company has decided to give based on the business, uh, job functions, each of the mm. job functions weightage of 20%, which mm. contributes to a 100% of the company's targets. Mm. Each of the individual job functions, uh, job function departments performance Mm -hmm. They will get their budget for utilization of their bonus plans, right? For mm -hmm. pooling, and this is the budget for it. So, example, if the product team is severely, say, like the product team's headcount is two hundred, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, um, and not every team has, uh, for example, a finance team, the overall of the FTE count also matters when I'm distributing the budget. Okay, mm -hmm. you get me. While I'm doing the budget for the bonus pooling, uh, I will not, uh, for example, my technology team under the CTO organization, although they are going to achieve 20% each, the 20% each on top of their FTE also matters. So they will not be getting similar of a 20 people headcount with that of a 200 people headcount. Okay, mm -hmm. for a people team of a 20 people, it, although you achieve 20% each, you will be multiplied with the 20 FTEs of the 20% each and you get the budget pooling, right? Mm -hmm. And typically for a 200 people, even though they are achieving at a 15% of their target, under achieving their target, right? They mm -hmm. still get 15% on top of the total FTE headcount. Mm -hmm. And then only they get a bonus pooling. How you have the distribution here done in Workday? So normally that is something which doesn't happen here. Right when we we'll, uh, look into the uh, composition review cycle, there I will brief you like how we set up the pooling, right, and how we segregate that. Okay, but here it will not happen, right? Yeah. This is just for here it's mainly about uh, like 
you have to mention about like uh, what that plan is specific about what are the group of people who is eligible uh, what is the scorecard that we are setting up but talking about like budget and everything that comes into picture uh, that will come into yeah. the uh, uh, comp competition review cycle right? okay okay got it okay okay now talking about we have plan modifier scorecard okay mm -hmm. if in case if i want to modify the target right of the scorecard right uh, this let me You can see here, if in case I want to make any changes to the targets that we have already in place, right, for different, different scenarios or with respect to different, different uh, locations that we have, right, like uh, within one country, there will be different, different, um, what do you say, different, different states, like if in case within respect to that, if in case I want to make any changes here, they have kept it the same, right. So in that scenario, we can set it up that as well. Okay. In the uh, location size, right? Yes. Of size of weightages. Okay. Correct. Okay. 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 Now coming back to the bonus plan. So we have already uh, looked into the uh, proration rule and the rounding rule, right? This is for set up for the uh, rounding of the amount uh, that comes into picture. And modifier scorecard is something what you do, uh, pre, uh, mentioned, right? Or the yes. Okay. Correct. Apart from that, the rest of the things remain same as in we have looked into the previous plan. Okay. If in case this is for something like uh, in the allowances plan as well, we looked into like if in case we have multiple eligibility group for the same plan, like let's take an example. We have the same plan, but uh, the group of people that is going to be eligible, right? It's going to be different. So we can create a different, different eligibility rule. They all will be, let's take an example, management level of manager. Okay. okay. But within manager, there will be uh, like you mentioned, one is related to product. One is related to other. If in case with respect to that, I want to set up a separate target amount and currency, right? I can set up that. Okay. okay. If in case, uh, we want to consider the performance factor as well. Okay. Uh, we can choose from here. Okay. With individual performance factor or multiple factors, if in case we are having multiple different, different factors. Okay. Okay. Deferred bonus, we will discuss at the later ranges. So this is of not that majorly used. Okay, so that's all uh, we have uh, in this, right? Uh, do you have any idea about this trenches that is there? Have you heard about it? Uh, usually we do it as tra vesting tranches while we do the stock options for okay. uh, in long term bonuses. We do it, but I haven't mm -hmm. done it in uh, cash value. Okay, uh, as per my understanding, uh, for multiple target years, right? For most of yes, the correct. Uh, we not pay we pa pay it in a, a very um, say like we have something like this okay for a management board uh, mm -hmm. uh, as per their contract their variable pay uh, say like 100 percentage of their uh, 100 percentage of their base salary is their variable pay just because mm -hmm. they are a management board they have multiple year of target where out of the 100 percentage 50 will be their deferred compensation and 50 will be their variable mm -hmm. shares Okay, and in the deferred compensation, whatever the amount that will be given, that will be paid out in tranches. For example, for twenty twenty, uh, for twenty twenty three, the target achievement, say like a uh, CFO is getting paid around like 
probation so yes. we pay them in tranches once the employee cracks the interview we pay them like 20 percentage of the referral and mm-hmm. the rest will be paid in tranches for the referee in every installments once for example if the employee has passed his probation he'll get the final amount okay whoever mm-hmm. has selected that particular candidate for the company yeah correct okay 